back with another video and today as promised uh, I just wanted to do the revealing of my new mountain bike um, in the last video <coughs> that I kind of explained the situation that happened that I pretty much had to sell my um, my uh, cross-country specialized chisel that I built um, and when that particular item sold uh, I had a $1,300 budget and that's it could not go over. I didn't have a fourteen hundred. Didn't have fifteen. Definitely didn't have two thousand. I had thirteen hundred to spend, and so uh, that's the bike range and categories that I was looking at. And uh, if you're wondering why I had to sell that uh, that chisel, I talked about that in the um, in my previous video. I kind of go into that whole story, so I don't want to repeat that. But nonetheless, let me get in today's uh, video and show you what I got. All right, so here we go, guys. This is the 2022 slash 2023 Roscoe 6. Now, um, of course, when I start the video, cloud covers the sun because I really wanted to show what this paint looks like in the sun. But um, it should come out by the time before I actually end this video. So I'll just kind of wait on that to happen. But um. But yeah, this is it, man. This is the this is the new bike. Um, I know you probably have already heard of this bike and seen previous videos. Yes, I'm kind of late to the game, but I'm not late to the game when it comes to knowing about the Roscoe. Uh, actually, it's been a bike I was looking at in the past and um, just didn't realize how much these bikes went up in cost. Now, let me start off by just saying this. Uh, as I kind of stated in the last video, I don't really plan on doing anything to this bike. Nothing at all. The, the, the pedals and grips, I've had these on the stump jumper that I had. And actually, you know, you can go back and look at those videos and see I had the, the pink um, pedals and grips on that particular bike. So all I did was take parts of what I had on my previous bikes and basically put them on this bike so i'm not adding anything new to this bike there's nothing new i had the mud guard on a previous bike and i had the seat i switched out uh got that from a previous bike that chains protector i had that on a previous bike so everything that's on it i've had on previous bikes there's nothing nothing new and i'm not doing anything new to this bike it is what it is and the only thing i might end up doing is definitely switching out the tires um at some point in time but yeah the paint color on this thing is called purple flip and i'm gonna kind of get in here so you can actually see the paint flakes in this thing but it is absolutely gorgeous especially when the sun hits it it changes from that dark bluish purple tone it's similar to how my chisel changed from changed from the uh green to gold the exact same thing this just changes from blue to purple but it's absolutely a gorgeous color. Um, I kind of already explained why I went with the, the bike and as far as the price range goes, because this bike actually ended up being, I think, 1200 and my budget was 13 And so it was right at my price point. It's really the only thing that I was interested in for the budget that I had. Um, the Specialized Fuses were another one um, that, I, that I was slightly interested in, but... Um, I went ahead and, and, and just pulled the trigger on the Roscoe because I've been looking at these a while back. Now, there is a debate right now going on. Of course, the, the, the Roscoe 6 for uh, this particular year did not get upgraded. It did not get the new geometry. It did not get the new frame. It did not get the, uh, what is it, the, um, the RockShock fork. It didn't get the uh, through axle, you know, it didn't get all of the upgrades that the 7, 8, and 9 has gotten. But here's the thing, man. Listen, like I explained in the last video, I just want a bike to have fun on. That's the only thing I'm worried about at this point in time. And the sun just came out, and man, I don't know how this is going to pick up on video. But in person, this paint, oh my God, this, this paint is sick, man. Colors mean a lot to me. Um... You know, even when I talked about the Jeep Wrangler that I bought, you know, I drove many, many, I drove over 24 hours to get that Jeep because of that color. The color is, I just love colors. And so color means a lot. You know, that, that was actually another big um, 
reason why I went with the six uh, compared to the seven, eight, and nine. But most importantly, of course, it was the budget. If I would have had a two thousand dollar budget, I might have went with the Roscoe seven. But I really did not want to go with twenty nine. Uh, 29 inch tires. I, I did not want a 29er this time. I've had 27 and a half plus tires before. I've had 27, uh, I'm sorry, I had 29 tires before on multiple bikes. If you've been following my channel, you know I've already had this debate. I've actually done a video on it already. And so um, I already pretty much know what each of them feels like, the pros and cons, and all of that. I just have more fun, feel more comfortable, feel more in control on the 27 and a half tires. That's just me personally. And the Roscoe was built on that platform. Like the Roscoe's were built on the 27 and a half tires. So now all of a sudden, Trek decides to switch it up, put 29ers on all of their Roscoe's except for the six. And you know, it's, it's, it's I, I understand what they're doing, um, but I don't like what they're doing. I don't like when they take a model that's already known for being in a separate class of its own and then all of a sudden try to switch it to be like all the other models even in people's review videos you know they use the words oh trek upgraded the roscoe to 29ers and to me that's not necessarily that's not necessarily an upgrade that's a preference and that's a choice for different riders some riders don't i'm sorry here goes the plane again uh it never fails some riders don't particularly care for a 29er. You know what I mean? So why, how is that an upgrade if some people don't particularly care for that or don't want that or just don't feel as in control as that? So to me, you know, upgrading the Roscoe to the 29ers, I get it. They should have made a specific special maybe addition of those bikes or maybe just make the 8 and 9s 29ers. But to just change the whole lineup and make them all 29ers, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I'm not, that's, to me, that's just not cool. It takes away from the whole Roscoe lineup. Um, but it is what it is. They're, they're going with the times and they're going with what, what people want. But you also got to understand the bike game right now and these companies are basically pushing this stuff down your throat. This is, they're making you believe that bigger is better. They're making you believe that, you know, they can charge $1,000 more for uh, 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 um, let's say the let's 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 just compare the Roscoe, right? I think the top of the line Roscoe is over three thousand. You know what I'm saying? Um, the seven is like two thousand. I think the eight is like I don't know twenty four hundred something like that. You know, but they're they're making you believe that just adding a few simple upgraded components that this bike is now valued at that much. I'm telling you, this whole bike game is changing after COVID. And if you're not paying attention, if you're not paying close attention to what they're doing, you're falling for the gimmicks of what they're doing. They're basically adding very minute components to make you think that bike is valued at what it is. Even at this bike, this bike pre-COVID, before COVID hit, I would say this bike would be, don't tell me, it's another plane. This bike before COVID, I would say this bike would not be worth more than $900 before COVID. Now all of a sudden, it's a it's a $1,200 bike. You know what I mean? $300 more. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and let's just compare it. Like from this to the seven, yes, the seven has the through axle. It has the rock shot fork. It has uh, upgraded, you know, wheels. Um, so there are small upgrades to it, and it's only like $700, $800 more than what this one is. But, you know, I can find a RockShox for that same Recon fork for pretty cheap. I can find those same components. Uh, actually, I can probably upgrade it higher than that if I buy slightly used from somebody on there. So don't don't think that, you know, buying a brand new bike with, you know, a few upgrades here and there makes your bike that value. Uh, these 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 companies are taking advantage at this point in time. Um, and I know it because I built that chisel and when you build it and you start learning about components and really understanding what they do you know you start to see what's actually going on so just be careful with that but anyway i'm rambling uh just wanted to show you guys the new bike uh this bike is heavy it weighs just as much as my nashiki colorado did it's coming in at about 34 pounds um it has the 27.5 plus i mean 27 and a half plus tires on it 
yeah it to me when i test drove it it really feels just like the colorado did it feels just like the colorado did it almost feels like the exact same bike to me so when i test rode it i smiled the whole time because i was just like yep this is this is what i want to go back to the nashiki colorado and the and the and the specialized epic were my two favorite most fun bikes that i've owned and i got a feeling this is going to be the exact same feeling as what i had on the on the colorado it's not taking the trails too serious i don't have to worry about no adjustments i don't have to worry about nothing failing as far as uh, shocks and you know automatic um what do you call it the automatic uh traction i don't i don't have to worry about all of those things that i had to worry about on my other bikes the sag adjustments and all of that type stuff this is i just want to get back to the fun basics of being on a mountain bike trail being out in nature and just having fun and it took me a while to realize that it took me three years of mountain biking to realize that's what i'm missing that's what i want the most you know i'm not going to be going to whistler i'm not going to be going down serious indo trails where you know i'm going full speed down a mountain bike here in, i mean a mountain bike trail here in florida I, i'm just not going to be doing the type of things that we kind of foresee ourselves doing at some point in time i'm not going to be doing cross-country races i just don't have the time or, you know it's just things that we we, we kind of psych ourselves up to thinking that we're going to do the reality is i'm just going to be having fun on a mountain on a mountain bike trail you know whether it's by myself or with <coughs> riding with my friends and that's that's all i want that's, that's all i want so i think all of this actually is happening for a reason even though i was definitely blown that i had to sell the chisel um i think it happened for a reason i think it all happened for a reason and of course i do think this bike is overpriced i'm, I'm not going to lie but these are the times that we're in and again like i mentioned in the last video gt aggressive pros is selling for almost double what they used to sell for I looked at a GT Avalanche on Dick's website. Thing is going for nine hundred dollars for a GT Avalanche. I used to get mine for five hundred. It's almost doubled in price, so I can't even be mad at paying, you know, three hundred dollars more than what I think this bike is worth. One cool thing um, that I will say about it is when you go on the Trek website, uh, these were supposed to go come with the uh, the Kindle title. I mean, uh, tires, um, but they all are coming with rocket run uh 27 and a half plus tires so i do think that is an upgrade i do like that but eventually once i wear these down i'm definitely going with some maxis probably uh dhf uh and tires in the front and back uh the dhf dhf2 combo and uh just to make it more grippy and uh other than that i really don't plan on doing too many more upgrades to it I'm gonna tell you something about upgrades and components as well. When it comes to these things, like I've had the Shimano SLX, I've had the Shimano XT brakes and SLL brakes, I've had the Shimano XTR derailleur, I've had Shimano. I tell you, it's like plane day today. It just just never fails when I make a video. I guarantee you, if I didn't make this video, no plane would be going by right now. Um. So I've had I've had pretty much from low end to high end components, and it, it's it, there is a difference. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's not a difference. When you when you jump from like something like this to a Shimano XT brake, the stopping power is unbelievable. When you get to those higher brakes, but these aren't that bad. I'm, I'm not. I mean, these are these are manageable. Even with the um, the SLX. I mean, honestly, if, if I had to upgrade any bike, I wouldn't go higher than a Shimano SLX. Because to me, the SLX and the XTs didn't really show that much of a difference. But these are decent. The uh, dropper post is decent. You know, it's not a Fox transfer like I had in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the chisel, but it's still a really responsive, good dropper. You know, um, the cranks, I, I have yet to be seen. I got to see about those. The only thing that worries me on this bike is the bottom bracket. Uh, I've never seen a bottom. I don't think any bike I've had has not had a true threaded <laughs> I don't think any bike I've owned has had a bottom bracket like the one this has so I don't really know 
too much about these kind of bottom brackets. Um, the ones I've had have, have been all Shimano's and threaded and I, I'm, I'm curious about that. So I don't know how that's going to hold up, but hopefully I can probably try to upgrade it if it gives me any problems. Other than that though, um, not too much else I would do. Yeah, I know it's a 10 speed. It's not a 12. I'm, I'm completely okay with that. Yes, I know it's a quick release in the back. It's not a through axle. I'm okay with that. I've had, what, three or four bikes that had quick releases in the back, and they've never given me an issue. Never given me an issue. And I, and I rode those bikes pretty hard, so I, I just don't see an issue with that. Yes, the Suntour fork, it is 120 uh, travel. Yeah, that could be upgraded, and maybe it will be, maybe not, but I've had a Suntour fork just like this, and it gave me no problems. So, you know, it is what it, it is what it is. For what I'm going to do on it, I think 120 travel is plenty enough. And uh, I'm just excited about it. Yeah, I did throw on like a cheap memory foam seat. I keep this seat on all of my bikes. If you can get this seat, this uh, memory foam C9, I don't even know if they sell them anymore, but it's a very comfortable seat. It's very, like, I think it's only like 45, 50 bucks, but it's very, very comfortable. So I don't need no high-end seat. I just need something that's comfortable while I'm riding. And that's it guys this is pretty much the new ride the roscoe 6 um i'm waiting on my is this another plane what is going on today i'm so sorry y'all um the only thing i'm going to do i'm waiting for the ride wrap to come in um i always talk about that on all my bikes all my videos ride wrap is the protective clear film that you put on there to protect the paint i put it on every single one of my bikes um, they range from, you know, if you want like, I think the protection I normally gets like around 65, 70% of the bike, it usually costs like 60 bucks and then uh, pretty easy to put on. But yeah, I'm definitely going to, to put that protective film on once it comes in because this is the type of paint that you want to protect if possible. And uh, yeah, I definitely plan on, plan on doing that. So, so yeah, that's it guys. Just wanted to show you the new bike and um I'll let you know. I'll do a review. I'm probably going to hit the trail. Well, first, it's just got to cool down. It's still the end of July. You know, August is usually the hottest month here. So it's just been so hot. So it might be a month before I actually do a video on this thing. Um, I don't know. I'll try to do something earlier if it's a nice, cool day. But other than that, I, I can't. It's just it's too humid and hot in Florida right now. So. Um, but I'll, I'll keep you updated and posted. Other than that, hope you guys are doing well. Check you in the next video. Peace.